What you are about to hear is a review episode of Amazon's The Wheel of Time show by the fans and guests of the Weaves and Will Talk podcast. This episode will include spoilers for The Wheel of Time TV show episodes 1 through 4. Though we try to avoid potential spoilers for what is known from the books, we cannot guarantee a spoiler-free experience. You have been warned. The will weaves as the will wills, and we are just a thread in the pattern. Welcome to Weaves and Will Talk, a weekly review podcast for fans of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time book series and the Amazon show of the same name. With help from my nerdy friends, we will discuss aspects of fantasy fiction and review episodes of The Wheel of Time show as fans of the franchise. Join us as we explore Rand Land together. And remember, be steadfast. Hello and welcome to Weaves and Will Talk Review Podcast. Today's episode is a review of Amazon's TV show, The Wheel of Time, Episodes 1 through 4. Unlike our last episode, this podcast will be from the perspective of someone who has not read any of the books nor has any prior knowledge of the Wheel of Time series or lore. While this particular episode was originally planned to be done with a panel of non-book fans, the demands of life, family, work, and other priorities have conspired in such a way as that we only have one of the panelists able to make it. What follows is a conversation with that guest of the show and his experience, opinions, and expectations of the Wheel of Time show so far. Enjoy. Welcome again to Weaves and Will Talk. Today's special guest is another fellow fiction nerd. Please welcome Greg to the show. Say hello, Greg. Hello there. So, Greg, you are special in the way that all the guests thus far have all been fans of the book series, but you're coming into this with no knowledge. You've not read the books, and so you can actually take the show as it's presented. What are your first impressions? Well, you know what? I actually... When I started looking at it and, you know, when you asked me to take a look at this and I'm an avid science fiction and I guess fantasy fan, but more of the sort of space ship and futuristic type of things. But anyway, after the first show, you know, I I guess I wasn't that impressed, but I became more immersed in it once I looked at the other episodes. Uh, And, you know, particularly particularly the, the, I guess, philosophical side of it and so forth. And it has beautiful scenery. That is one thing that really stood out. Uh, and the sets that they've created are also amazing. I mean, I would be curious to know where this thing is shot as well as how much actually spending on the sets and scenery and that type of thing. So it's really amazing from that standpoint. I guess overall, as I got more into the story and began to be able to relate to the characters and as the characters were developed, I actually became, I mean, I actually like it quite a lot, uh, quite frankly. Uh, it's entertaining, you know. It, it, it's not like it's it's going to blow you away about some epic series or whatever. Although it may turn out to be, I do not know. Uh, but it is entertaining. There's lots of stuff to look at. Beautiful scenery. Uh, it has multiple layers. I suppose you could watch it just by thinking, uh, you know, here's the sets, here's the fighting scenes, you know, look at the monsters, that type of thing. But then there's another layer if you get into philosophy you can you can pick oh wow they're, they're actually doing some pretty deep things like one scene in particular where the little girl uh where they had gone to the farm and the, the owner of it came out and was going to shoot them with a bow and arrow or whatever if you remember that scene and but later on his daughter brought out uh some food or whatever to them and gave the guy a little doll and said 
you know, uh, hey, you can have this. He's like, no, I can't, I can't take your doll. And she goes, oh, I have plenty of them because whatever the doll's name of, she's always wanted to the world, silhouette or whatever it was. But at any rate, at the end, you know, that the uh, fade, I guess, came and actually killed all of them. And as they, the two were escaping, I think it was Matt and Ran, I believe it is. If I Correct. The name mm -hmm. They were escaping and they actually showed the little doll laying on the ground. Now, to most of you, you can say, oh, yeah, there's a doll that got dropped out of his pocket. But for me, it was like saying a little girl being stuck in that little place wanted to see more things of the world and was fantasizing about having dolls to do it. But now that she's dead, the doll no longer <laughs> will be seeing the world or that it even matters. So it was sort of like, again, I, I like little things like that, that, that cause you to go, oh, so I, I like it from that standpoint. I think the writers have done a good job. And having not read the books, uh, I don't know what the, what the, what the, the, the author is like and that type of thing, but you know, if he's dealing with he or she, is dealing with that type of thing. I, I like that sort of thing. It, it's not just eye candy. You know, it has multiple layers to it, and I like that. Oh, I agree with you, and I tend to be the same way. Those little hidden gems that re uh, reveal more characterization without necessarily dipping into dialogue or long exposition. Just like you said, the doll on the ground says a whole lot without saying a word. Yes, yes and, it does. Yes, and it does. yeah, I, I can give kudos to I love you know, things. I love things like that. Uh, in shows and again because certain shows are just you know shoot them up blow them up you know slice dice that type of thing but this again it engages you at multiple levels i like that now i know you said with the very first episode you weren't sold do you remember what some of the things were that kind of uh left you wanting or beginning to maybe turn you off well quite frankly it was just so much going on and i didn't know any of the reasons why now the obvious answer to that it's the beginning okay uh, but nonetheless, true, true. It was just like these 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 things that were happening, and it was kind of like why? Because usually, as the audience, you know, at least for television shows, and and for some for most books as well, you, the reader or the viewer, kind of knows what's going on. You know, why things are going. You you're, you're kind of looking down upon the scene, if you will, with some form of superior knowledge of good and bad. Mm -hmm. But so when this started off, it was just things happening. It's like okay. You know, they're sitting there and all of a sudden the uh, what, Trollocs come in and they're killing everyone. I didn't know who the lady was. And it could have been because I wasn't paying that much attention to it initially. Um, um, so it was just, whenever I looked at it, I was like, oh, wow, they're, oh, wow why, why are they doing that? Oh, wait, who are these bad guys? Why are they wanting to kill everybody? You know, and, and but then you get information later on as to why, you know, what these things were, what was actually going on and so forth. And you mean, could, even, even as far as the the, the uh, woman, I, uh, Ed, Edwin, I believe. Edwin. Edwin. Please have me. I, I'm sure I'm going <laughs> to that one up throughout. The, Edwin. Uh, you know, I actually went back and watched the first episode again after I'd finished the whole series. And basically, I, I guess I didn't notice at first how she was joining this, this group of women. I guess, I don't know if they're the women of wisdom. But again, back to the philosophy, it was neat. Where, uh, uh, what was one of the saying that once you join this group as a woman, you all you will you are always alone. But when this group somehow you'll never be alone. However, they stated that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So I began to understand who she was, what part she was playing, and that type of thing. Because at first I was just trying to figure out who was doing what. But having gone back and watched it, it's like ah, okay. So it could have just been my lack of attention. Well, I think some of it is the fact that you're pulling on or they're pulling on a fully realized and created world. So like you said, the first episode is going to be kind of laden with things that if you haven't read the books, you're not going to be familiar with at all. But on the other hand, that can be an advantage to people that haven't read the book because you're kind of in the same place as a lot of our protagonists start with, with – They've been living a small, quiet country life, and then chaos erupts, and they don't quite know what's going on either. So in that way, you're actually closer to the characters, you know. <laughs> well, well, if that's the case, I was right there with them because I'm like, what is going on here? Who are these folks? I mean, why would they want to come to this little village? And also, just by way of humor, also just one of these Trollocs. Like, what do they eat when they're not eating other people? <laughs> 
this this they have lots of teeth which suggest they're used to eating lots and lots of meat and all that stuff i know i'm just kidding i mean it is just a television show but these are some really ghoulish characters and so forth and let's not even mention the fade i i i've yet to embrace what that is <laughs> so whoever i don't know if you got that same imagery from reading the book or whatever but uh they definitely took license on the fade i mean that's i've not seen a character like that before i guess i've seen screenshots of this movie called venom or something but at any rate it's basically a mouth well uh, without biasing you one way or another i will say the fade was described differently in the book like, uh-huh. make no mistake, we recognized it for what it was, even if you read the book immediately. We knew that was their their interpretation of a fade. But in the book, the fade could uh, pass for a human. And their, theirs obviously cannot. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. No. Like, it, it, it didn't have eyes. Way. If I remember correctly, it didn't have eyes, but it had a nose and a mouth. So if it had the cowl pulled down, you know, and uh-huh. you weren't looking directly at it, it would just look like a person walking by you know right. which is how they could get in close to you without necessarily attracting attention this guy is always going to attract attention <laughs> <laughs> well with all of the trollocs that hang around him i don't think that's a problem that's uh, true he is not very low-key in, <laughs> in the show <laughs> no and, but, but but again it, it, it initially but having gone back and watched it and and quite frankly i would advise people who are just watching the show uh, there's a lot going on, lots of new names, and and like me, Ed, Ed Duane, you know, just getting the names down. Mary Ann, the, the, the lady who from the Aes Sedai, the uh, Moraine. Mariana. Moraine, Moraine. Mm-hmm. See, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely chopping these names up. I would suggest people really, particularly now that there are only four episodes, to go back and watch them over again because somehow you get more immersed into what's going on. Even though you're knowing what's going to happen, it's still. It's worthy of doing. Worthy. Uh, you think you're having trouble with the names now. Wait until it, not only will the name list expand, but as much as I like Robert Jordan as an author, he was not very creative with those names. <laughs> and so you get a lot of similar names. And that then it becomes even harder to keep up with who's who. Cause, right. And I don't know what language, you know, or, or country the names sort of lend themselves to. But it's all like little offshoots, you know, just being as well dumb Americans or whatever, or culturalist Americans. You know, anytime a name is outside of Jack, Sue, Betty, Greg, whatever, you know, it was kind of like, uh, how do you pronounce that? Uh, actually, I'm going to watch all of it. So that's, that without a doubt, I will be watching all of it. Uh, I mean, there are just so many questions laid out there. Uh, and I'm sure you will be talking about more of this, but I'm just curious to know who's actually the most power possessing beings. So obviously that's being with hell. At some point, there's going to have to be someone that steps center stage and so forth. Although the Aes Sedai, if I pronounce that correctly, you nailed it. Those are incredible individuals as well. But at least in the last episode, I think even they were impressed. Uh, I can't remember her name. One is like Alana, but then Moraine. Uh, we're looking at the uh, what is her name, Adriana, the the head of the, the wisdom person from the village. That's naive. Naive. See, t- <laughs> naive. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they were impressed by her, and even the bad guy uh, that was in the cage. Um, Logan. Say again. Logan. Logan. How do you remember all these things? I mean, how long ago did you read this book? Uh, well, there are 14 books. I currently have read 10 of them, so I'm still not complete with the entire series. Uh, but all of these names, you just, you command them all. Oh, Lord, no. Absolutely not. I dropped so many names so quickly. It's just like the core characters I remember because I've been with them since book one and we're in book 10 now. But there are plenty of other characters they'll meet along the way. It might even be significant for that particular action. I don't remember their names. They don't stick. Well, what's his name again, the guy in the cage? Logan. Like Logan. the hair stuff, except with an L. Even Logan, because Moran. Mor, Mor, Moraine. Moraine. Oh <laughs> Moraine. Okay, now, you don't hear that name every day. But at any rate, Moraine had mentioned about, you know, your power is merely a, you know, a prick of sunlight against a blazing sun. 
Well, for Lorraine, Logan to actually be that impressed by, uh, oh my God, Nani. whatever her name is, <laughs> yeah, her power, you know, even impressed him. So I think that that, and we all know that she is not the, the 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 star of the show, if you know what I mean. Uh, so I'm I'm curious to know what's going to come out there, and and what other you know bad guys out there, particularly the folks in the white coats, and that questioner person who I actually do not like. I'm I'm like rooting for it, his demise. Uh, yeah, I think whatever end he eventually meets, whatever that may be, will probably be uh, celebrated like Joffrey's end in Game of Thrones. You know, everybody's <laughs> okay. just waiting for that person to finally bite yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 I do. I, and if if there is, uh, uh, I don't know what the right phrase is, but his his his, his introduction when he eats the little bird with the beak and the bones and and you know blood dripping out of his mouth. Uh, hopefully, a little birdie will get him. Or maybe the bird <laughs> Very Hitchcock ending, just attacked Viciously. by a swarm of birds. Yes, yes. <laughs> Flock of little birds are pecking to death. You know, uh, I would not be opposed. A thousand death by a thousand slits or something but our our pecs I, I would not be opposed to such an end he, he's not a very likable guy uh, no. No. <laughs> if you like him you definitely have problems <laughs> so what do you think of our five potential dragons then <sighs> okay let me let me make sure i'm 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 whatever here um uh, the girl's name. What is her name? Egwene. Egwene. Mm -hmm. I'm rooting for her to be it, and particularly because the Aes Sedai are all women and so forth. And the woman who wears the red, and that's another thing you may have to explain to me. There are different colors for the different Aes Sedai, the green, mm -hmm. and apparently they have certain core characteristics associated with them, other than mm -hmm. being bad, you know what. Uh, there, there are certain characteristics. Uh, so we have to explain that one to you. But at any rate, um, so I think it's going to be a woman if it's going to stay true to what I've seen so far. And that would, and that would seem to point towards her. Uh, the Matt, I know, I think he's out for the count. Um, and uh, Perrin. Right. I got him right. Yes, That's you did. Aaron, uh, no, he's he has issues from having off his wife that he still hasn't faced. Uh, I know he has a special relationship with the wolves, which suggests maybe he's got this nature thing going on. Uh, uh, but I just don't see him him being it. And also, he was male. Uh, and of course, there is Pretty Boy, and <laughs> Pretty Boy is just a little whiny whatever at the moment and and so you know he has his moments where you kind of root for him but but of the and you said five but i'm saying of the four at least that i can uh, uh relate to here he's the least whatever to me uh i, I don't really resonate with him and so forth uh, fair enough he, he, he seems to be more of a this moral compass seems to be a little bit more more uh, 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 true than Perrin, obviously. Uh, but you know, he has his moments, but he's he's just not for me. And I, if they make him the the actual power possessing being, I think I would go <laughs> and lose interest or something. Like that. That's how much I dislike him. That's fair. I just not dislike. It's just he's again he has his moments, but he's just. He whines too much for me at the moment. But that could be a personal thing. Okay. No, that's Maybe fair. I see me and him. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the way they're directing us, the fifth is Nynaeve, if I'm right. What's your assessment of her then? Ah, Nynaeve, as in the wisdom uh, person. Yes, but it wouldn't be... For me, it wouldn't be enough of a surprise. I'm thoroughly impressed how the fourth episode ended with her demonstrating some of her capabilities that again impressed everyone uh, <laughs> as well as 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 a lot but alana yeah she was there because she linked up with them yeah uh, in the tent was moraine alana and lalandrin i'm pretty sure in the cave they were in a cave well yeah i'm sorry in the cave that was holding Logan. Yeah. in other words uh uh moraine 
was was impressed by her. Uh, the woman, the which one in red? Um, That's a uh, Lelandra. Lelandra. Oh, I'm glad you stuttered and had to had to. <laughs> I don't feel so. I feel a little bit better now. Oh, there'll but be anyway, plenty, uh, <laughs> plenty. They were, they were all impressed by her, uh, but I'm still voting for uh, Edwayne. Edwayne, but I'm yes, yeah. Edwayne, Edwayne. It's Edwayne. <laughs> we're voting Edwayne. for E. <laughs> okay, I'm voting for her. You know, but any anyone except the two guys, I think, are out. Okay, the two guys are out. So it's 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 between. Uh, oh man, I, see, I hate to even use these people's names because I feel like an idiot not being able to regurgitate them. But Edwin, 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 and uh, Magneve, Aneve, whatever something. <laughs> Egwene and Nynaeve, yeah. Egu but Edwin and Nynaeve. But Nynaeve. don't feel bad because even among my like a uh, little panel of hardcore book readers, most of them have read the series in its entirety twice or more, which is ah. saying something. Uh, yes. Even they will sometimes argue about names because some of them read the books, you know, traditionally holding a book and mm -hmm. reading it. Some of them listened to it on Audible, where it had a narrator reading it, so the narrator gave pronunciations. But we don't necessarily know if those are right. So all of us are kind of watching the show to see whose name pronunciation is going to survive. Well, again, I obviously watching it sort of all at once. You know, I'm, I'm sure as I watch more, that that'll go away. But you know what? The difference in names are the are the different style of names, whatever the correct adjective is there, is okay because it helps to draw you into the whole ecosystem, if you will. You know, absolutely. It's it's, it's, it's like part of the scenery, if you will. Uh, so I think it brings you closer to the characters. You know, it 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 it's spice in the soup. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I can answer your question about the colors and the Aes Sedai without unduly biasing you from anything about the book, because so far what they've presented does seem to be more or less consistent. So I don't think I'd be ruining anything, but you're absolutely right. What, what you've picked up is there are different colors among them, and they're called Ajas, A-J-A-H-S, Ajas. And basically, you know, you have the red Aja, you have the blue Aja, you have the green Aja, which I think are the ones okay. we've seen so far. In addition to those, you have a white Aja, a gray, a yellow, and a brown. I think that's everybody. And you already picked up, they kind of have their own inherent personality traits and duties kind of that are aligned with their Aja color. So the red Ajas they've already pointed out are the ones that track down men that can channel. And you know, they're they're kind of like the, the, the I don't know, the go get them squad. They'll just show up, now, posse up. Now you mentioned channeling. The only one that mentioned channeling, perhaps there were others, was uh, Lagain. Lo Lo Logain. Logain, yeah. Logain. He mentioned that he could see all of the previous dragons, dark dragons or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that when I channel, I see you know thousands of past lives and that type of thing. I didn't know that that was a quote unquote common thing among men. Except I guess in one scene, it was her, the red. Uh, Aja, uh, at the beginning with a group of other uh, Aes Sedai who were tracking down the two men, which turned into one. I didn't quite get the significance of this. If that was something they caused or uh, he was only one person who was having some type of mental... That's medicine. what we think. We don't. We also don't know where they exactly meant with that scene, but we took it as it was a figment of his imagination. Ah, but for them to say that, you know, basically... You know, tracking them down, but her going like, you know, this is the power only that women should wield. But no one else have I heard mention anything about channeling. So channeling is is just the term they use for using the magic, using the one power. So ah. instead of like casting or something like that, they call it channeling. Ah. So so is there a difference between the one power, which is white, and staying true to that metaphor throughout time of white being good and black, the bad stuff? Is that sort of like the dark force and the light, like, you know, sort of, you know, AKA uh, a Star Wars type of thing? Is it is it the dark side and the light side or they're entirely separate things? See, here's where we get iffy because I'm not sure if they intend to change this or not, but I will say based on what I've seen and based on what I know the book said, the one power is one power. 
but <laughs> but it, like it, it, well, I say that, that a bit redundant there. Like, <laughs> one power it is one power. Well, I, I meant it in the sense that. that it's not like the force where there's the dark side and the light side of the force. It just simply is whether you use it for good or ill. You know, it makes no difference to the power in and of itself. In the books, however, and I don't think they're going this way on the show. The books divide the one power in terms of gender. There's the one power that guys can use, and there's the one power that girls can use. It's all from the same source, but they're able to tap into different aspects based on gender. I did not know that. Yes, because the show has not shown that, and I don't think they're going to. And another thing that was interesting is that when you sort of notice where the one power is coming from, you know, it, it, it looks like it's coming out of things in nature, but when uh, Moraine was, 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 was juiced up for her last show at the, in the first episode to take care of the Trollocs, mm -hmm. it came from the sky, like up inside the storm in the of a hole in the sky and came down. And that's the only time I've seen that occur, I think. Well, so see. I'm just curious as to when is that like the source? I always thought it was coming from the earth, but she like reached upstairs when she needed uh, lots of it well once again i don't know how the show will answer that but if they're going to answer it the way the book does the book has it as when you channel you're pulling on different sources depending on what you're trying to do and each Got source it. has a weave and the weaves were actually represented in different colors in the books so you could actually see uh, you know what uh, they were doing and if they were pulling you know green that might be earthen if they were pulling white it might be sky uh, but the different uh, elements in combination made different things happen and uh, girls were better at certain elemental work than guys were better at other elemental work so once again it was gender based right yeah uh, but it. theirs yeah. are all the same color for the cgi effect so i don't know if they're going to go that way or not i don't know got it got it got it Got it. But I didn't know that men could utilize. I thought it was only a woman thing uh, as uh, the red Aisha. And that yes, is, no, she said the, the power was power meant for, for women. women. Yes. Yeah. Didn't say that men couldn't do it because obviously Loghain can. But she said so, the power was only meant for women. Well, how was, why was he so powerless then? And every other time you've seen him, he's, he's almost a godlike being. As in bad God. Like yeah, no, 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 I figured. Uh, they didn't specifically answer. I would assume, though, with that many Aes Sedai chasing you, he was just outmatched or overwhelmed. Hmm. I don't know, because they haven't answered that. It's a very good question. And when are they going to tell us about who the, I think they were female characters, who are the dark power thing that is always whispering in his ear? I mean, I assume there has to be a story behind that. I oh, mean, yeah. Lots of story. Happens, but it sounds like someone else or something else is, is trying to inject themselves into this. And they just haven't touched on that at all. They just speak every now and then. Yeah, I have no idea. I know what that probably would normally relate to from books, but I'd have no idea what they're going to do with it. Because they've done other things in such a different direction. I feel... I no longer feel safe giving any predictions. But that, that I want to know those things. So yes, there there's still some things left hanging. I like how they're developing the different characters by uh, the little pairs going off into their own little uh, 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 forks, if you will. Uh, so I'm uh, lots of questions to be answered. Uh, although my favorite what group of people. Or the, um, oh God, I call them the gypsies, but they have another name. The Tinkerers. The Tinkerers, yes, they did mention that. The Tinkerers. Yeah, I can give you the complex it. name, but I think we'll stick with Tinkerers for now. <laughs> Sounds good. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I actually like them. I, I like their philosophy. You know, I, I when the leader of them was talking, and again, back to watching something that actually has depth to it. Uh, when... She was describing what well, he had asked her why she was with, I think, with the people or whatever, or why she was doing this. And I mean, why she was doing what she was doing. And she was saying she wasn't doing it for people, uh, wasn't doing it for herself or whatever, but rather for her daughter who had been killed by whomever. And the guy, and she described how she wanted to um, get revenge once she saw that they had killed her daughter uh, as a sport, I guess. 
which God is kind of a macabre scene if you really think about it. But at any rate, um, and she said that, and he asked her, I mean, she stated that I want to, you know, get up the courage to pull the broken spear out of her chest and to go chase them down who did this. And he was like, wow, well, why didn't you? Or, or that would be, you know, seemingly the human thing to do and whatever, you know, do you want to hurt them back? And again, back to philosophy. And this I really like because I want to remember it. And that's another trait of a good show, good book, where you get little tidbits of wisdom that you resonate with. And, so mm-hmm. forth. and, and this I did when she stated, well, what weight, I'm, I'm sure I'm, 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 I'm chopping this up here now, but what, how can you hurt violence more than through uh, uh, what is it, peace or, or love or whatever? How yeah, what you... better vengeance can you have against violence than peace? Yes, yeah. I mean, and you have another one as well. But it's thing, uh, things like that I want to remember. Like, uh, you know, you're watching it, or I'm sure I tend to read books uh, electronically. So whenever I see little things like that, I always, you know, stip them off to my Evernote or something like that. I do the same thing. <laughs> Keep them as a list of whatever whatever my particular reader is, so that I can actually go back and utilize those things a bit. And that, to me, is for me a trait of a good show, movie, book, whatever that it has those types of things. Uh, so it it somehow lends itself to you're seeing that either the writer or whatever actually I don't know thinks about these types of things or whatever. I want to find a way to project them out of their characters and so forth. It becomes an alternate description that is eternally or subjectively processed, if you will. But I resonate with stuff like that. So. Same. And I, I have a tendency to collect things like that as well when I come across them and just add them to my yes. aphorism or food for thought list kind of thing. Yes. Um, I, and I, I love how you always find the right words after <laughs> I really, no, I'm impressed by it. So I'm giving you a, a compliment there. Well, I, I will like, take said compliment. I think, I think my old, my old head uh, uh, used to do that. Right now, I just kind of have to use. You know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> well, I was going to say that you probably would like the book. Also, goes into, of course, more depth about that philosophy. And one of the offshoots right. of that that you'll come across, at the very least, I'm sure in the show and practice, even if they might not explain it, because it's a detail that's not necessary for the story. But uh, the tinkerers don't use swords ever. Period. Point. Right. But uh, they'll uh, use. Explain that but they but they'll use been... knives, daggers, axes, and the way they make the distinction, I thought was very interesting. Which is they were like all those other tools, while they can be used for violent acts, there that's not their purpose. You know, the purpose right. of the axe is to chop, and that can be chopping wood or building furniture. Right. Daggers right. have, you know, knives have other purposes, you know, for cooking and other things. But the sword only has one purpose. It's only for violence against people. It was never designed for any other job, but all well, the others were. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I never thought of it that way. Deer or elk. <laughs> yeah, but most people don't go hunting with a sword. They'll go with a bow and arrow. They might go with an axe, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it pretty much is a straight on, I'm going to hurt this guy weapon. That's, that's really all it's for. But, but also, you know, sort of just looking at the show holistically, though, back to the wheel. Now, they said the wheel of time, but it, it's literal about that. Well, so far, the way I see it, the cycle of life, you know, as, as things go forward. So they, it's as if they truly embrace that. Back to the saying that uh, Inev, mm-hmm. did I get it right? Mm-hmm. Inev, uh, when she stated that that phrase when she was talking to, don't tell me, don't tell me his name. I'm going to think of his name. Uh, not Alan, not Alan. It's any rate, it's the 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 water of Moraine. Land. 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 Land Moraine or something. Land. Okay, land. Yeah. Uh, when he was talking to uh, Aniv, yes, and she stated something in the blah, and he stated, "I didn't know that you knew the mother tongue or the old tongue or whatever it is." Old tongue. She goes, Actually, I don't, but this is what my parents said to me. The last things they said to me before they died or killed and so forth, and he explained to her what it was. Again, neat. Give me a right word here. I don't know uh, metaphor, description, or whatever about hey, we are going into the land so that we can always be touched by our offspring, our children, until we come again. It's like saying, you know, death, you're going into the earth, we should embrace the earth, and it'll come back to us again. So I, I, 
Little I will thing call like that a... thematic metaphor. The manic <laughs> metaphor. The manic metaphor, because it is a theme that runs throughout the the course of the yeah. story. So. And I'm sorry. Let me get the first word. Thematic. Thematic, like a theme. Oh, thematic. thematic. Yeah. Okay. Thematic. I'm sorry. I thought. Oh, thematic fine. metaphor. You know, I've not heard that phrase before in my life. I understand the meaning, stitching them together, but somehow it sounds cool. Thematic metaphor. As far but as yeah. I know, it's not a term. Yeah. It just seemed like the two stitched together. You know, fit. All right. Right. <laughs> But the tinkerers seem to have really embraced that, and and just like a a thing about you know, hey, the the way to what what how more can you hurt violence than to stop, you know how more, and so they seem to have just really embraced it, like like we don't have to go up and fight and be this whatever. It's sort of like the 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 uh, 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 yin and yang or the you know passive aggressive type of thing. The mountain looks strong and and foreboding. But over time, water will move it. You know, type of thing. Now, you mentioned land and the warders. What did you think of the warders in general and their relationship with Aes Sedai? Interesting. You know, I kept wanting to see if there was a sexual nature of it. Uh, uh, and that was on because of the scene with Moraine and Lan, uh, where they were taking a bath together. I mean, it, it, it seemed as normal as you know, having a cup of coffee and so forth. But they haven't pushed that at all, although when they were in the camp near the end with a lot of the warders were there and so forth and, and, and the way that they were with each other. And they did describe that the relationship between the Aes Sedai and the warders was beyond husband, beyond children, that type of thing, which suggests, you know, at least my cultural markers that that's, like something I'm sure I don't know the characteristics thereof. So it just might usurp all of these common things I would associate with it uh, type of thing, who knows. Uh, but it, it's, it's like it is another way of painting loyalty, if you will. And the fact that as I need described, I thought you were a two-legged lapdog uh, to say that, oh, I'm not, we do this out of choice also suggests a really positive aspect to it. I mean, really positive. Like, like even though I don't fully understand it, mm -hmm. I think it's good. How does that sound? That sounds good, especially with the information they've given you. Right. Um, because you are still missing um, important things, but they did show some things that I think are subtle to a person that is unfamiliar with the Aes Sedai and the water situation, which is, if you noticed... The Moraine obviously has land. That's her warder. Uh, when we got to the camp, like you said, there were lots of other warders around with their Aes Sedai. Uh, one of the green uh, Aes Sedai, I want to say it was Alana, but it might not have been, came and got her warders and picked up two of them that were her warders. Uh, and if you notice, the red don't have any warders at all. Did not notice that. Yeah, like I said it's subtle, but the people in the books already knew that that was a setup because generally speaking among the ajas all but reds tend to have warders the reds don't they they go so well, when they were fighting the warders played a significant role in protecting the Aes Sedai that's their job certain times. well you that's know, that's uh, essentially the warder's job because you know right, when you're right. casting you're vulnerable and their uh, job is to protect them at all cost so if i might ask why not the reds Aja, the reds do don't want them not? They don't want. They don't want a water. Now I mean, I'm not sure why. Or do I have to wait? And see? Well, see, I don't know if they're going to give a reason why <laughs> in the show. In the books, the reason why is all warders are men, and the Red Aja are the ones that hate men and track down, you know, wayward casting men. So they just want nothing to do with. They're completely, you know, anti-man, absolutely, and that includes even turning down warders. Speaking as a man, I just put them down at the bottom of the ladder with the Aja. <laughs> Red's not my favorite, no. <laughs> On the other hand, you can switch it to the, the pendulum to the other side of the spectrum, which is the green Aja, which not only take one warder, they tend to take several. So you might meet a green sister with three warders in her care. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just as you saw at the campfire last night when uh, she comes and claims her two warders and they disappear – and the yeah. one guy that's there just kind of smirks, and Nynaeve's like, they don't 
that she doesn't finish the sentence, but we know what the rest of the oh, sentence exactly. is. Exactly, but see, that's my point. I, yeah. I kept looking for a sexual nature. Well, see, among but, the green, but, they might. Among, well, exactly. Yeah. I, I feel like they're playing with you. They're suggesting extremely subtle. Well, like I said, the Green Aja has been known to do that. You know, sisters and their warders have been known to have relationships. But that's the only in the Green. Outside of that, traditionally speaking, all the others are completely platonic. Since we're talking about the Aja, the one that they mentioned that they were going to take Loghain back to and not do the subtling of him or whatever it is. Gentling. Gentling. I'm sorry. Gentling. Yes, they were going to gentle him. Um... Who is she? She must be the supreme Aja. And the Amelin Seat. She has power beyond whatever. The Amelin Seat is the leader of the Aes Sedai. The Aes Sedai are exclusively female. That's it. Uh, their warders are exclusively male, but as far as the magic users, exclusively female. The Aes Sedai. Uh, without me telling you, do you have any inclination or do you feel like they've given you any information on why that is? No. Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. It's been played. I truly enjoyed this. Same all, here. Uh, talking to you is excellent. Same here. And, and I hope thanks the audience again. will actually enjoy this. Uh, uh, folk out there, my voice. There is one of the neatest people that I've run into on the third rock from the sun. Uh, <laughs> so it's really fun to play with her like this and see that, see that this is one of her interests. But also professionally, uh, um, you know, her being a writer and that type of thing. And I'm a nerd. You know, I draw straight lines and boxes. And every now and then I feel kind of risque. I draw a diagonal. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, you folks are really lucky to have her out there sharing with you what she does. Neat person. I've enjoyed And with that completely, you know, indulgent uh, compliment, I will go ahead and stop here. Well, my head's inflated. <laughs> yeah, I think that is the perfect way to go ahead and bring this to a close. As expected, you have been an excellent sparring partner and conversationalist. <laughs> hey, Gregory, go watch his show to do blah and so forth and tell me what you think. <laughs> that I'll do. Join us next week for more Weaves and Will Talk. And please remember to like, comment and subscribe. May you find shade, my friends. inside of him. Would you cough up a little bit of black bile and you're out of the game? What? Uh, in my neighborhood, yeah. <laughs> you could be my friend. I love you to death. But if you start coughing up black bile and bats, I'm going to say nice knowing you. My goal <laughs> now is to maximize the distance between us. That's fair. That's fair. Without, without, without much thought. That's a well-reasoned response. I can't fault yeah. you for that. It's a reptilian <laughs> response. I can't eat you. <laughs> I don't want to fight you, so I'm running. All right, this is called lower brain stem reaction.